As you can see, there is nothing special about my Goodwill. In fact, it probably looks a lot like your Goodwill store. But today, it is special because I brought my niece Sadie and my nephew Jasper with me, and they are going to pick out items for me to transform into spring decor. I gave them no guidelines, so let's see what they pick out. So when we get home, will you put those on for me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's start with those Dutch wooden shoes. They are actually huge. So I think these might have been part of a costume. To freshen up the wood, I lightly sanded over the scratches and stains. Then I chose a floral rub-on transfer for each shoe. I bought these from Amazon a while back. You just rub over them with a plastic or wood scraper until the design releases from the paper and adheres to your item. I also added some typography from the same transfer set. I wanted to add a Dollar Tree flocked rabbit to one of the shoes, but it was a little too big, so I used a plastic knife to slice off pieces from the rabbit's lower half. I ran some twine through the existing holes on each shoe to create an easy way to hang them. I filled the second shoe with styrofoam and then began adding several greenery stems, arranging some to stand upright and some to drape down over the side of the shoe. I added a couple faux carrots and then I hot glued some of the flocked pieces that I had cut off the rabbit to cover the styrofoam in the shoe. To get the shoes to hang nicely, I ended up removing the previous twine. Instead, I drilled new holes in the heel of each shoe and ran twine through those holes. I hope you enjoyed that first thrift flip, and I can't wait for you to see how I transformed the other thrift store finds that my niece and nephew picked out for me. So let's get to it. Are you able to do something with this? Yeah, that is actually, that is awesome. You have great taste, Jasper. I was very surprised that Jasper chose a pepper mill. I'm not sure if he even knows what it is, to be honest. To begin, I screwed off the top and removed the nuts and washers so that I could pull out the center metal rod. I used an oscillating saw to cut small slits in the wood top, but you could use a small hand saw if you don't happen to have an oscillating saw. I added wood glue into the cuts and then stuck two woodcraft ovals into the slits. Then I used a bit of wood filler to fill in the hole where the metal rod had been. Next, I found two small wood pieces cut from a small spindle. I made pencil marks on either side of the pepper mill where I wanted to attach the spindles. Then I drilled small holes in those spots, and then I drilled small holes near the end of each spindle. I ran a small wood screw through each of the spindles and into the pre-drilled holes on the pepper mill. Yep, you guessed it, the spindles are arms. I sanded the small ends of the spindles to round them off a bit. Then I found a round piece of wood in my stash that I nailed to the back side of the pepper mill for a tail. To unify the different colors of wood, I painted everything with chalk paint. I started with a light brown, but you'll see I used a darker brown for the second coat. I painted the inner part of the ears, the chest, and the tail with white chalk paint, and I used a black paint pen to draw on a rabbit face. Everything was going along smoothly, and then suddenly it wasn't. 
I thought a crackle finish on the rabbit would be interesting. So I mixed up some old milk paint that I had. Milk paint is a powder that you mix with water and it creates a crackle finish as it dries. I guess because my paint was so old, it had gone bad because it didn't crackle at all. So I took a damp cloth and tried to rub it off and some of it came off, but most of it didn't. I try to believe in happy accidents, but at this point, I wanted to throw it really hard into the garbage can. But I decided to embrace the rustic look and distress it even more with some sandpaper. Then I pulled out the magic elixir, antiquing wax. I brushed on antiquing wax that had been watered down and quickly wiped it off and I was actually starting to like it. I thought it was time that I attached the head to the body with a little wood glue. I had recently thrifted three miniature gardening tools for just 50 cents. I chose one of the shovels and painted it with some green chalk paint and nailed it to the pepper mill. I also added a tiny wicker basket filled with some Dollar Tree carrots. So you'll have to let me know, do you like how it turned out, or did I ruin it with that old milk paint? It needs help. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Sadie thought this metal flower was hysterical, but I actually liked it, and I'm going to use it to embellish Jasper's clock. But first, I cut it off the piece of driftwood. To make the flower more interesting, I decoupaged a patterned napkin to the top of the petals. You just pull apart the napkin and use the top patterned piece. Brush Mod Podge on your item and then carefully press the napkin into the Mod Podge. Then brush Mod Podge over the top of the napkin to seal it. Once the Mod Podge is dry, remove the excess napkin. Sandpaper brushed along the edges works really well. The center of this flower was plain, but I found a metal flower in my stash that I had removed from something in the past. I cut the center from that flower and used E6000 adhesive to attach it to Sadie's flower. Then I propped it up to let the glue dry. Hmm. Okay, that's, that's doable. I like clocks, Jasper. All right. I think you picked a clock the last time. Do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> and it was one of the weirdest clocks I've ever seen. There's another clock down there. See that white one? Do you like yeah. that one better? Oh my god. Why don't you grab it? What do you What do you think? Which one do you? Um, this one. one. Yeah, this one. Yeah, I I agree. The white one's got more potential. Okay, let's go with that one. So I want to use the metal flower to embellish Jasper's clock. I removed the screws from the back side and carefully folded up the metal tabs to remove the clock face. There was a piece of foam that separated the clock face from the glass that I had to remove before I could remove the glass. Then I carefully popped off the clock hands, but in retrospect, this wasn't really necessary because rather than replacing the entire clock face, this time I decided just to use a few images from the same napkin that I had used on the metal flower. I used a pair of small scissors to cut around some of the flowers in butterflies. Then I brushed Mod Podge on the clock face and carefully placed the napkin pieces into the Mod Podge. Once I was happy with the way it looked, I brushed on a top coat of Mod Podge over the entire clock face. This will protect the paper because I'm not replacing the glass. 
once the Mod Podge was dry, I replaced the clock hands. I found an old butterfly earring in my stash that I also wanted to add. To make the butterfly match the flower, I applied some antique gold rub and buff to the flower petals and to the butterfly. I had spray painted the clock black to create more contrast between the clock frame and the gold flower. I put the foam strip back in place and then I pushed the stem of the metal flower through the foam and through one of the holes in the base of the clock frame. To hold the flower in place, I bent over the stem on the underside of the clock. Next, I reattached the clock face. I wanted to make sure that the butterfly didn't get knocked off, so I mixed up some epoxy, which I applied to the sparkly front side of the butterfly so that the gold side would be on top. I also applied some of the epoxy to the back side of one of the leaves to stabilize the flower. I just taped them in place until the epoxy fully dried. That looks like a cactus. Yeah, that's, that's kind. Of, that's kind of cute. That's honestly, not bad. I think you yeah. could redo that. I think so too. I think that's I think cute. You could do this. I All right, you've it. got two winners. Let's two go. winners. I'm not sure why I told Sadie that this birdhouse was cute because when I really looked at it, I thought, boy, that is one ugly birdhouse. I thought about trying to turn it into something completely different but it's made from cheap particle board that I thought might disintegrate if I tried to take it apart. To begin, I removed the welcome sign, hammered in the perch, and added a few nails to repair the roof. Then I painted the metal roof with two coats of a creamy white chalk paint. Because the particle board was so stained and damaged, I decided to cover it with scrapbook paper. To create a pattern for cutting, I pressed the scrapbook paper against the birdhouse to create indentations where I could cut along. I cut one piece for the back, but I needed to cut the front piece into three smaller pieces, so I decided to use a coordinating paper for the center piece. I used a good quality spray adhesive to adhere the paper to the particle board. Then I used an X-Acto knife to cut out the hole and to cut off any extra paper. Then I used a little sandpaper to soften the paper edges. I thought about caulking the gap between the house and the metal roof, but for a fun twist, I decided to fill it with moss instead. I just used a small metal spatula to press the moss into the gap. Then I used hot glue to add a little moss around the center piece. I also used hot glue to attach a small piece of miniature fencing to the birdhouse base. The base was in really bad condition, so I just went ahead and covered it completely with moss too. While looking through my crafting supplies, I found a tiny Christmas wreath ornament and pulled off the embellishments. Then I hot glued it around the opening. To add some greenery, I hot glued a viney stem behind the fence and curved its branches around the roof. Then I used the wire on a faux bird to attach it to one of the branches. To further secure the vine, I pushed a couple florist pins over the branch, pushing them through the moss and into the gap. To conceal the florist pins, I covered them with a bit of moss. Adding a bird nest to a birdhouse may seem redundant, but in my opinion, adding a nest is always a good idea. I just twisted a bit of angel vine into a circle and hot glued it in place. 
And of course, I added a tiny egg. Yeah, that's cute. I like it. It's beautiful. Okay, this time I really did like Sadie's choice. This basket is cute and it will be even cuter decorated for spring. First, I added some styrofoam and then I realized that one side was cracked. So I decided to repair it with hot glue and moss. Now it will hopefully look like moss growing on a tree and not just a big crack. I recently bought a Dollar Tree birdhouse and watering can metal picks. Before adding them to the basket, I dressed them up with some more of those Amazon rub-on transfers. I cut down the pick on the watering can so that it would sit level with the styrofoam. Then I added some styrofoam inside the can. I cut another branch off of that same vine that I had used on the birdhouse and stuck it in the watering can. Then I wrapped the stems around the basket's handle. I wanted to add a bunny and I started with a ceramic one, but you'll see here in a minute that I switch it out for a small flocked one instead. Next, I covered the styrofoam with moss. And if you're wondering, I've had the same big bag of moss that I have used forever. I put a little Spanish moss in the watering can, which looked like a nest. So, of course, I added a few bird eggs. I thought the basket needed a little pop of color, so I added a pink floral stem. And I also wanted to add some carrots, but I didn't have any small ones. So I decided to use some Dollar Tree wood Christmas trees. I drilled a small hole in the bottom of each tree. Then I painted them with some orange chalk paint, propping them up on skewer sticks to dry. Once the paint was dry, I glued some small pieces of greenery into the drilled holes. And voila, tiny carrots. You know, I rarely throw anything away. So I wanted to see what I could make with the leftover piece of driftwood and the metal rod from the center of the pepper mill. I drilled a hole in the driftwood and inserted the metal rod and began hammering it into the hole, but I accidentally hammered it all the way through, causing the driftwood to break apart into several pieces. Needless to say, I was not happy, and yes, I wanted to throw it away, but instead I grabbed the wood glue. When wood glue dries, it actually creates a bond that is often stronger than the wood itself. Then to disguise the cracks, I once again filled them with hot glue and moss. While the wood glue dried, I grabbed a small bird cage and covered the bottom with a few more pieces of the styrofoam I had cut off the Dollar Tree flocked rabbit. I added a few more stems from that same vine, and I also added some tiny pink flowers. I attached a bird to the top of the birdhouse, gluing a flower in its beak. Then I added a nest inside made of some Spanish moss that I just rolled up. And because the nest was so small, I used two tiny beads for the eggs. Now to put everything together. First, I twisted a few more of those vines around the metal rod. Then I mixed up some five-minute epoxy 
to attach the bird cage to the top of the rod. I always use a two-part epoxy when gluing metal to metal, but please let me know if there are other products you can recommend that have worked well for you. Although the wood glue had fixed the broken driftwood, it was no longer level on the bottom, so I just nailed it to an old piece of wood to create a sturdy base. You guys know the drill. I always want to know which of today's projects was your favorite. I had so much fun making this video, so please let me know if you'd like to see more videos just like this. Thanks so much for watching today. Hope to see you next week. Bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.